The sentence will be that Ms. Frankie serve four counts, four one to 15 year sentences based on her convictions for four counts of aggravated child abuse. Again, they will serve consecutively, be served consecutively pursuant to the party's agreement and the applicable statute. Under the applicable statute, the court finds that consecutive sentences are appropriate. It is always a cause for global celebration when child abusers and killers are faced with the sweet arm of justice. Ruby Frankie and her partner in crime, Jody Hildebrandt, have been sent to prison and it was the perfect outcome everyone had been waiting for. Sadly, this is not always the case. Today, we remember the angel who inspired the Amber Alert system. Her name was Amber Hagerman and we will shine the light on why her case tragically went cold. It happened on a sunny Saturday afternoon in the city of Arlington in Texas. Nine-year-old Amber Hagerman and her five-year-old brother Ricky left their grandparents' home. On their way home, they rode their bikes past the Wind dixie supermarket. They promised their mom, Donna Williams, that they wouldn't stay out too long, but like every young child their age, they tried to push past the rules. They rode around the parking lot for a while until Ricky decided it was time to return home. Amber was still buzzing from her ride, so she insisted on staying a while longer. Sadly, Amber was enjoying not just her best ride yet, but also her last ride as well. Because minutes later, she was gone. 78-year-old Jimmy Kevill had a good view of the shopping centre that afternoon. He later reported that he had seen a young girl riding her bicycle alone in the empty parking lot between the laundromat and the vacant grocery store. I had seen that little girl over there playing up and down there, and he run up behind her and grabbed her. He turned around and come right back to here where his truck was where the door was open and put her in the truck. He saw everything. As he was watching her, he noticed a black pickup truck suddenly pulled up between the two buildings. He also watched the driver get out and forcibly pull Amber off her bike. Amber resisted being taken. She kicked, screamed and struggled, but no one was nearby to assist. As you can imagine, her strength was completely insufficient to withstand the adult man's full force as he threw her into the truck and sped off. When the police responded to the call, the truck was long gone and there was no sign of the man or Amber other than her pink bicycle that was left behind. Kevil was the only witness who had relevant information to aid the search for her. Sadly, it was not enough. Kevil provided the police with a very detailed description of the kidnapper. He described him as a Latino, or white male in his 20s or 30s, with a medium-built body and brown or possibly black hair. He further described the vehicle as a full-size, black, fleet-side pickup truck with a short wheelbase, a single cab, and a non-sliding glass back window. There was no chrome, no striping, and no obvious damage. Together with the police, the entire neighborhood set up several teams of five to ten people to search for any signs of Amber or her kidnapper, but to no avail. The police sent a unit on site where Amber was abducted while a search is launched around the neighborhood. Tonight we had some information to be on the lookout for a black pickup truck. Officers were following every black pickup truck that moved in the city. But every second is crucial, as the driver could be getting further and further away from the crime scene. At the same time, Donna contacts friends and family to pass out flyers with Amber's picture on it. As neighbors become aware of the kidnapping, the search party grows in size, and more and more volunteers join in. So many people just wanting to help start showing up at the house that they begin to fear. Maybe the man who took Amber could have walked in, and no one would know. The FBI and Arlington police put in a lot of effort talking to neighbors, looking for the suspect, and searching for the car. In the hopes that someone would come forward with information that could lead to Amber's safe return, local radio and TV stations covered the story in their regular newscasts. But as the days passed, Amber was nowhere to be found. It took four days for her body to be found. Amber was found naked, save for the sock on her left foot. She was found face down on the concrete, just a few miles from the location where she was abducted. 41 p.m., Arlington's dispatch receives the call everyone's been dreading. Amber's body has been found in a creek, only four miles from where she was kidnapped. Apparently he was walking our dog and uh, he had looked over the fence and had saw something white. Looked again and noticed that it was a body. 
I didn't want to believe it. During the body's laboratory examination, traces of DNA were discovered, but at the time, water had washed away all potentially useful evidence, so it was unable to yield as many results. However, what the autopsy did reveal is that Amber had been brutally murdered after being held captive for two days and subjected to sexual assault. Her throat had been slashed open, and the evidence suggests that this was the fatal wound. It is truly unsettling to imagine Amber's last days on Earth. Sexually assaulting a nine-year-old and cutting her up after is an unforgivable horror. Cases like this are daily reminders that evil exists in this world. While we cannot imagine the horrors she endured before she lost her life, we can only help but wonder just how much a child can take. This brings to mind the youngest Frankie child who was rescued from the Hildebrand House of Horrors. Little Eve Frankie was around the same age as Amber when she was abducted and killed. But unlike Amber, Eve endured the terrible conditions at the hands of her very own mother. According to court documents, Ruby Frankie and her partner, Jody Hildebrand, were very close to killing the children. And it wasn't just Eve, her older brother Russell was equally a victim. Now, the court documents stated that Frankie and Hildebrand intentionally or knowingly inflicted serious physical injuries upon two children in their care. The document described the physical torture of the children who were forced into manual labor for long periods of time. This manual labor included wall sites and consistently carrying boxes of books up and down stairs. The document also states that the children were made to stand in direct sunlight for several days and work outside without shoes or adequate food and water. Notably, this abuse occurred over the summer months, so just imagine how hot out it would have been. Even worse, the document revealed that the child's hands and feet were routinely bound together with rope and handcuffs, or at other times, the children would be tied to an adult or to wait. As gruesome and absolutely horrifying as this sounds, the abuse did not stop there. The children were also denied adequate water for several days and would be punished when they secretly consumed water. They were denied sufficient food and when given food, they were given very plain meals. Specific instances of abuse included kicking the kids while wearing boots, holding their heads underwater and cutting off oxygen by placing hands over their mouths and noses. Now, it wasn't only physical abuse going on in the Hildebrand House of Horrors, the documents also revealed that Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt regularly sought to indoctrinate the children by convincing them that they were evil and possessed. The children were forced to believe that being totally obedient was the only way to end their suffering. Imagine that. Imagine telling the kids that everything that was being done to them was an act of love. We want to lay emphasis on the fifth count that Ruby Frankie pled guilty to in the original charging document. This count five is specifically about the abuse of EFEF being Eve Frankie, who was only nine years old at the time. According to the documents, the defendant's actions also caused severe emotional harm to EF. She was also repeatedly told she was evil and possessed. The punishments were necessary for her to be obedient and to repent, and these things were being done to her in order to help her. EF was convinced that she was evil and needed to go through these things in order to repent. F. Other than binding and the specific instances of abuse RF was subjected to, EF was subjected to the same treatment as her brother. She was isolated and forced to do the physical tasks, remain outside and denied food and water. She was also repeatedly told she was evil and possessed. The punishments were necessary for her to be obedient and to repent, and these things were being done to her in order to help her. EF was convinced that she was evil and needed to go through these things in order to repent. These are very serious and even life-threatening situations that nobody, let alone children, should be subjected to. There are absolutely no words to describe how vile and enraging this case is. And these are children that thankfully made it out alive. Sadly, Amber Hageman was not as lucky. We can't forget the words of the former Arlington police detective, Randy Lockhart, when discussing Amber's case at a Cleburne Rotary Club luncheon in 2021. He said, quote, where the water drains from a pipe. She was laying face down on a cement slab. Thousands of gallons of water had washed over her. When it was time to take more pictures of the body, we rolled Amber over, and I caught her head in my hands leaves and twigs tangled her long, dark hair. Bruises marred her pale skin. Her eyes, once a vibrant blue, were now hazy and greyish. Several lacerations to her throat. A knife or screwdriver had been used to rip her throat out hanging by a little bit of skin. 
had her eyes open and she was staring at me. No parent should ever have to go through such a tragedy, but Amber's parents were forced into that reality. All they could hope for was justice for their daughter. And yet, there are parents out there like Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt who go out of their way to harm the very children they ought to love, care for, and protect. To date, no one has been connected to the case by forensic evidence. The major reason why is the fact that Amber had spent a while in the creek bed with all that running water. There was also an intense storm within that time, so all evidence that might have aided the police was washed away due to the water flow. Unfortunately, the mystery was left unsolved. Since then, both Jimmy Kevill, who saw Amber being kidnapped, and officers like Ford, who were familiar with the case, have passed away. With no new suspects or leads, the case of Amber Hagerman hit a dead end.